This is Ralph Eckert for Billiard Network. Welcome to our next tutorial, number 10 so far already. And this time it's about speed, feeling, getting the right, how to get this feeling for the right speed on those specific shots we had the last time. Remember, last time we had 40 and 50 degree shots and 60 and 70 degree shots. So you can imagine the thinner the ball gets, the more speed is still on the cue ball. So and that's so it's a different speed feeling, right? We had the speed feeling on follow, on draw. We had it on um, on the uh, along the tangent line with the 10 and 30 degree shots, and we had it on the follow from the 10 and 30 degree shots. And now it's a different thing. So let's go through this. Wel uh, welcome everybody for going through those 40 to 50 degree speed feeling shots, speed feeling drill. We set up, as you see in the diagram maybe, so the ghost ball is like in the total center of the table, the object ball in front, and here you got the intersection of this diamond, and when you put the ball beside this left and right and mark it, then you got the zone, here you got 50 degrees, here you got 40 degrees, and in the middle 45, there you got the zone, you can move, you're free to move the cue ball in. And the first shot would be, of course, we have to put it, we shoot it in the, in the middle pocket. It's hard to hold the cue ball here with this kind of angle, right? So the first field starts after contacting the rail. So you played basically just a soft stop shot. And if you miss like this, you probably forgot to concentrate on the seven steps in the program and put the quality in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stop it. And we are restricted to stay into this and this diamond zone here, the middle two diamonds. So it will be a straight up and down. If this is the first zone within two diamonds, then the next zone is here, two diamonds, then the zone number three is here, zone number four is there without contacting, number five after contacting, six is here, seven is there, eight is there. And um, yeah, it's just about to get the feeling of the speed to see, yeah, what's the difference between the feeling uh, on 40, 50 degree shots, zone number five and number four, five and six, seven and eight. These feeling won't drop from sky, right? But we can, we can develop them by practicing it. And believe it or not, it's a very strange drill. Yes, I, I confess that, but um, you don't have to put too much time in it and you can benefit a lot in your game with it. Just go through it a couple of times and I'm sure you will get it pretty soon. So, and uh, let's make a cut before we do, or let's do this, this shot also in that scene. We are limited always because when we send the files, you know, we do always like four minutes. Okay, let's do that. So it's after the rail and behind that line. I would have had more room till here. So anywhere here and restricted here. So we have like, hmm, maybe 40% of potting ability is necessary here, especially when you go there. And maybe, um, maybe another 20% of direction ability or 30-30 but most percentage, like 40% ability, needs to be for the speed feeling in that direction. So let's have a look at the next six shots uh, from the next scene. So let's have a look at this position three, which means rail first, second, always two diamonds wide fields, and then the third is between middle and foot spot. And, of course, we are restricted inside those two diamonds, but you can see it in the diagram. Anyway. Okay. 
Here we go, pretty good. And I would recommend, let's maybe we get an example on ball number four before I explain. Just continue. So the next position field with the four ball would be here before contact, contacting the rail. And when you hit the rail accidentally, I mean in a game it's probably doesn't make a difference, right? In a game, but here it's about training and to develop the feeling for this and that. And we had the border, so let's do it again. Build up your picture and you give you a K okay when you think your shot feeling is a little bit softer than the previous one. Here we go. And maybe you notice, you have to deal, when you go through this drill, you notice also things like, like this. Normally you say, okay, it's just a stop shot and you stay along this line, right? But you will discover when you hit that ball, even without spin, because you strive the object ball, the cue ball gets kind of automatic spin. So if you hit it like a stop shot, the automatic spin will, be, will give the um, cue ball a little bit direction outside, getting outside that zone and maybe some accident uh, uh, spin also sometimes. So you're going to learn also to stay, uh, to play these shots without any spin, right? And um, I would recommend instead of going, giving some uh, left side spin to avoid this automatic spin or equal it out, I would say try to play instead of a stop shot, play more like a replacement, which will be on 40 degrees somewhere here. And this is enough to equal it out. Okay, so you might try that. And uh, let's have a look in the next scene for the last four positions. So let's have a look at the next. Five over there. Ball in hand, uh, I mean a bit here in this zone, like I mentioned. Then you just do your job. Step one, two, so I build up the picture, going up, down, hitting the rail, and stay in this zone. Speed was correct, but you see, I'm going to miss here this zone, so if you're in a training mood, remember our concept, right? Then you just repeat it until you get it. And if you're in the documentation part once a week, then of course you continue, no point. How many out of eight can you score? And to, uh, you will put in time into this kind of drill until you get maybe on this uh, documentation day until you get maybe seven out of eight, at least, okay? Uh, depends where you started at. I will show you also an easier version for our beginners also. But let's continue here, number five. Hit the rail and stay into that zone. That's fine. And at number six. Now you can say six is that field, which is the same like field number three we had before. So it might be not logical for a game situation, right? It don't has to. It's, uh, it's about the ability to get this feeling, to get this uh, feeling the difference between five, six, seven, you know? And this feeling, once developed, you can also um, um, bring it into another situation. Maybe if you are here, pretty much the same thing, and then you go this direction. Even if you put a side spin on it and you like to go around like this, or you got it more like this, and then you go these directions where you need spin anyway to avoid some scratchings. So the feeling 
itself is transferable. And that's why we do sometimes also positions which make maybe no sense in a game, right? But um, yeah, let's do that. So, and sometimes to give you a nice picture, right? Step number two, nice picture. Step one, two, some players put their cue there or some hand to give them a picture where the cue ball should go rather than where it, oh, everywhere, but not here or not there, not too much, not too soft. And if you got those, uh, those words in mind and those pictures in mind, it's gonna happen, right? <laughs> so give yourself a nice picture of where you wanna get it. Barely over and fine. Okay, so. And then remember always this um, replacement kind of a shot to avoid to um, uh, even out that automatic spin you get by hitting that ball there. The easier version, by the way, is just one diamond closer to the pocket. And from here you go one diamond close over there, then you got the same angles, right? Easier to pocket, and you make your field from that diamond until the rail without touching it, and then you got something, a version which works also for not so well experienced players, and when they get their number, like seven out of eight, they can change, they are ready to change to go for that version. And uh, let's have a look at the last two shots in the next scene. So, let's have a look at the last two remaining balls here. At seven ball, and the zone would be here, right? After hitting that and that rail. So, all the way up, down, and ending in that zone. See, automatic spin. Or accident spin by myself, I don't know. But next time I'm gonna make sure it will be less. Remember, you do not a stop shot, you do something like a replacement or follow stun. To equal out this automatic spin. And here we are. You see I made a uh, correction, almost too much, but I'm inside. So let's do the last one, which will be down there again. And here on the last field, which starts here, is even double as big because here it's okay. It doesn't matter if you touch that rail second time or not. And of course, when you master that drill going up and down and up again, and letting the cue ball stay in the center of the table, that's an ability which is very important in a game to have that. And the more speed you give, you see, the more the tendency is also from this automatic spin, so I have to repeat that also. Not an easy shot though. So here we are, fine. And um, yeah, I hope you're gonna like that drill. I showed you the easier version anyway. And uh, this one is already difficult enough that it's also for top players, quite okay to go through it one time. Of course, you can make it always tougher and uh, making the zone smaller by a diamond instead of two. But yeah, if you like, you can do that. But I guess two diamonds are hard enough anyway and also inside the 
two middle diamonds. So now the next target is to have a drill which shows us also the, uh, the speed feeling for our 60 and 70 degree shots. Remember, 60, 70 degree shots. So let's have a look at this also. Here we are in our drill version for the 60 and 70 degree shots and requiring the speed. So the potting of the ball, we make it uh, easier, of course, because it's closer to the pocket. And the cue ball, not as uh, seen in the, in the picture, um, but I have a sentence in the descri description that you can move, you don't have to play it from here like we, when we did our 70 degree shots, when it's about potting only, right? Or the 60 degree shots when it's about potting only. We did it from here, I guess. And, um, but here, the main target should supposed to be the speed. So I make the potting easier, which means if you are inside here, this uh, head spot, then you got approximately the 60 degree shot. And anything thinner will lead you to the 70 degree shot. Exactly would be like this, but you don't need to go for it and you don't, you're free to go there, but it wouldn't make any sense. So any spot beside this head spot will be fine in order to reach that ball, okay. And for beginner's version, of course, you can always go and change this over there, and here you stay inside there, and if you make a direction there, you can approximately getting closer to it to have the same shot, a little bit easier for beginners, and then you make the same speed zones along here. Not as many as in this direction, because the rail contact reduces, uh, takes out a lot of spin, uh, speed, but uh, yeah, that's where beginners can also get the first feeling on speed on 60, 70 degree shots. So here in our drill, the first zone starts after contacting this rail. We stay always inside this zone. So we have maybe a 10% potting ability necessary, 10, 20. And then we have maybe another 30% of direction ability necessary to stay in the zone. And the rest is like 50% ability to is the, to get the right speed feeling, right? And so after the hitting that rail, our first zone is two diamonds wide, anywhere there. Of course, you can make it also start in, adjust the drill and start here somewhere, but I did start over there. So let's do this first. It's just a natural roll. Remember, if you hit very thin, then we know it's going to go naturally over there. If you cheat the pocket on the other side, it will go naturally more over there. But I'm pretty fine in the zone. And let's have a look at the other shots as well in the next scene. So let's have a look at the next shot. And maybe for, because I don't want to bore you with all the positions. I'm going to limit myself here just to show maybe the two ball and maybe two more, maybe the five and the eight position only. And then, of course, it's up to you to go through every speed. You have to get that anyway. So speed, uh, our second position zone would be after that rail between center and foot spot. Pretty much natural roll. And a little bit harder than the previous one. Then you are exactly in the zone. And five would be if this is zone two, three is here, four is there before hitting the rail, and five after hitting that rail the second time.
That's it. And yeah, barely in the zone. I hit it pretty thin always, right? So that's why I stay on that line. And uh, number eight, which would be equal to the first zone actually, but it's not about to be sensible like in a game, right? And it's just about to catch that feeling and then you can transfer it into some situations where it makes sense. And if it would be really a 70 degree shot, then you might have a problem to shoot it that soft to stay there. Then you might be forced to go up and down twice. So it's now down this way, up and back over here. And here we got like a double zone because it's two diamonds with and with that extra rail. So let's do that. You see, this time I hit it a little bit more solid and ooh, not enough. So I have to repeat that. Let's do that. And when you play harder, you have to remember the tangent line, right? Is going inside there and outside angle would be approximately here. So the tangent line brings you out of the zone anyway. So if you play like a stop shot without spin, right? So here again, you have to do more like a um, follow stun or even a follow shot would be fine to stay in the zone, okay? Because the harder you shoot, the longer stays the cue ball on the uh, uh, tangent line, right? So we won't have problems on the first couple speeds, but on the last one, of course. So let's do that. Hmm, that's basically the number seven. Okay, give me one last try on that one to get that. That's a pretty hard, hard speed shot, but I like it. All right, let's get it. Here we go. So I hope you like that drill also. It's uh, strange a little bit. Yes, you don't find that kind of a drill a lot in uh, in, on YouTube, but it will give you quite something for your game. And remember, um, but we do that in the next scene. I have some final words to tell you how all those pieces we do separately will fit together later on in the later stage of all the tutorials. Maybe a few words left to this uh, tutorial for this strange two drills. Um, yes, you can do also like a whole position drill where you place a ball here, maybe the next ball there, and when you get required, when you have the starting position, it's something like, okay, you need to play position for that, which would be like our first position zone, right, from that particular drill. Or if you play, place the next ball over there, with this kind of angle, you try to get it up and down also, which would be like our fifth uh, position zone and you can make also even some more balls there and do a whole drill out of it but then it would be a positional drill uh, which requires everything pocketing because if the position is not 100 percent you need to get a higher potting ability different angles and um, uh, yeah different uh, requirements of the uh, direction and speed more or less tolerance, depends on the situation. But before you do this, before those, all those pieces, direction, speed, and potting ability will come together, we're gonna have also these kind of position drills. Before they come together, those pieces, we wanna practice them more kind of separately. 
to achieve them, to get them separately, working on them separately. And you will see, if you follow this tutorial, at the end you will see how all those pieces we had will come together in a game. Okay? We make step after step. Maybe the next tutorial, when it's about uh, center field or so, then uh, we're going to have uh, direction and speed coming together. And then we're going to have position drills where direction, speed and potting ability coming together. And then we're going to have game situation where everything comes together. So we're going to split everything out and yeah, that's uh, like a little invitation to uh, step in and enjoy, enjoy us in our tutorials. And of course you can still have everything here in the structure book which comes normally with those um, testing drills. We go usually through those. You can order them through myself if you don't find them anywhere else. Uh, just by sending me an email or one of the other books. And yeah, I hope you like that uh, kind of method. And uh, looking forward to do some more tutorials uh, moving in this direction. Thank you very much. This is Ralph Eckert for Billiard Network.